Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to use our trig functions, more specifically our inverse trig functions, to find a missing angle measure. The most important thing to do is to look and find exactly which angle they're looking for. They're looking for angle R, the measure of angle R, which is one of the two acute angles. Now, I don't have either of them. If I knew this one, it would be nice because I could just subtract it from 90 to find R. But we don't know it. But they do give us two sides. So we're going to use either the sine, cosine, or tangent function. Which one we use depends on the angle and depends on the two sides they give us. So they give us this side and this side. But what are those two sides with respect to angle R? So I'm going to label them as far as opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. Find your right angle. So you can identify your hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. Since I'm looking at angle R and this side forms angle R with the hypotenuse, this is my adjacent. And since across the triangle, this side over here would be the opposite side. Now we need to know our trig functions. I've written the three trig functions here off to the right now. So the question is, which trig function uses the adjacent side and the hypotenuse? Because those are the two sides we're given. Well, the adjacent and the hypotenuse is the cosine function. So I know the cosine of R is going to equal that ratio. So again, the cosine of R, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, is going to be 10 square roots of 129 over 20 square roots of 43. By the way, I can tell that this reduces to the square root of 3 over 2. Now, it's all right if you don't realize that. If you just want to type this whole thing in, by all means, you can do that. But now R is going to equal the inverse cosine of that number, and you can use your calculator. I just recommend please do not round, and let me show you why. The reason you shouldn't round too much is when I took the inverse cosine of 0 0.8660254, I got 30.0000043337. If I took the inverse cosine of 0 0.8, I would get 36.87 degrees. If I took the inverse cosine of 0 0.86, I'd, I'd get 30.68 degrees. The correct answer is actually 30 degrees exactly. So I don't want to round. I would actually type in the square root of 3, divide it by 2, and get some long decimal. And then remember how to do the inverse cosine. It's the second or shift key of your cosine key. It's above the cosine. Find your cosine key. Look above it. You'll see a little cosine with a little negative 1 above it. And it's the second cosine key. And then make sure you do that big long decimal to find out that it's 30 degrees. Again, write down these three sine functions. Remember what you're going to do is you're going to find the angle they're looking for. You're going to identify the three sides as far as hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. You're going to find out which two sides they give you corresponds to which trig function, and you're going to do the inverse trig function of that. Let's do one more. This one seems easy enough. Nice little even numbers, three and four. First one thing I'm going to do is identify which angle I'm looking for, which is angle J. Going to identify the three sides. That makes this side the hypotenuse, this side the adjacent, and this side the opposite. They give me the adjacent and the hypotenuse again, so I'm going to use the cosine. The cosine of j is going to equal the ratio of adjacent side over hypotenuse. And if you need to rewind and write those trig functions down, do that. So j is going to equal the inverse cosine of 3 fourths. And I'm not going to get a nice answer this time. So we won't always get nice answers. So I get J equals 41.4096, but it says write your answer as an integer or as a decimal round to the nearest tenth. If I did it to the nearest tenth, it would be 41.4. 41.4. So just realize you're eventually going to get some that are not nice integers. And again, it will depend on which sides you're given, which trig function you use. For instance, I'm not going to do this one completely, but I'm looking for angle W. Here's angle W. I'm going to identify the three sides, hypotenuse. This will be my adjacent. This will be my opposite. But notice in this time, they give us the opposite and the adjacent. That's the tangent. So the tangent of W is going to equal that 
opposite side of 7 over the adjacent side of 5. So to find W, I'm going to do the inverse tangent, not inverse sine, inverse tangent of 7 over 5. And again, make sure you, you ask me for help if you're not sure how to you, do your calculator, find that inverse tangent key. If you have questions, too, please bring them to class.